She chose God as her best friend when growing up. Now, part of the Bride of Christ and commissioned by the Father, Minister Charmaine Noel carries the good news of the Gospel to all the lands. Minister Noel and the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, welcomes you on the Highway of Holiness. God told Minister Charmaine Noel to prophesy into the lives of the people so that they may be carriers of His glory and walk in the supernatural with mighty miracles, signs and wonders following. Hello everyone and welcome to our program Highway of Holiness where you know always it's a pleasure to be in your company to speak the very heart and mind of God to you wonderful people. Well, today I'm really excited because I know this message will transform your life. You know, there's so many people who, you know, that you write to me, you know, you message me and you tell me how you appreciate the teachings, especially even pastors. A lot of you would let me know, you know, you appreciate the teachings as well. I want to say to you, today's message is definitely a teaching. My God, I'm going to be speaking about two words that seem to be unrelated, uh, absolutely unrelated in terms of the character character and nature of God, but we're going to discover today that we absolutely need to put these very two uh, uh, characteristics of, of God, we need to put them together to understand Him even more. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, we know one plus one equals two, but many times, you know, we've discovered in the kingdom of God, things aren't always as they seem or, or as, as they appear. And so while one plus one may equal two in mathematics, let me tell you today, you know, I, you know, I was talking with someone and I said to them, you know, you know, it looks as though if we look at one cloud and, you know, up in the sky and we look at another cloud, you know, up in the sky and we turn around, uh, you know, just for five minutes when we, when we look back, those two clouds merge as one. So, so that one plus one actually became one. We know even, you know, according to the scriptures in Genesis, when God made man and God made woman, it's one plus one. But guess what he said? He said, they, sh they shall be what? Echad, they shall be one. And we know one plus one, they meant one. And so not always things appear as they seem, as, as I'm coming now to teach on these very two words, these very two characteristics of, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm speaking about mercy and I'm speaking about integrity. And when we look at those two words, you know, they don't seem to be much related. Yes, mercy is important and yes, you know, integrity is important. But, but how, can they, how can they come together? And this is what God is going to show us today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain something to you about the mercy of God that many of you may not have understood before. And so many times we, we equate mercy with grace and we say, Lord, your grace and your mercy. And, and, we, and we put it together as, as one. But I'm here to say to us, it's absolutely not the same and when we go into the beatitudes as what i'm going to be doing right now we go into the beatitudes you know jesus is speaking and and jesus is the he's coming and speaking even as the proto rabbi of course in the times of jesus there were no actual rabbis and and jesus came as the example of what a rabbi is to be for he would come and, and you know the bible says you know he sat and you know when he sat those around him you know would be the, would be his students and the close the ones closest to him would be his prized students which of course were, were his disciples but let me say as he sat to begin to speak it's incredible. He began to explain to us, you know, his very nature, his character. The Beatitudes really speaks to us about the Lord Jesus Christ. But one of the things he said in verse 7 in Matthew chapter 5, he said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Can I say that again? He said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy and you know that word blessed is, is machrios you know in the in the greek and it and it speaks of being happy it really speaks of of a celebration of celebrating just imagine when you're celebrating something that's how you're feeling it says you're blessed you're happy you, there's there's a celebration you know when you know you know you are ex, you're expressing mercy to someone because you're going to now receive mercy now we have to really break that down a little bit today and that is what god is going to do with us and he's going to tie that with integrity. I pray that you're taking notes because God is going to speak to us so much today. You know, Matthew chapter 5 verse 7 is different from the other, uh, you know, uh, verses of Beatitudes. It's really unique. And why am I saying that? 
because because in all the other in all the other verses we see where if you do something this is going to happen to you you know if you invest in the pure in heart you shall see god you know but, but in this particular one it is the equal you are actually going to receive what you give but you're going to receive it in perfection what am i saying blessed are the merciful the one who gives mercy for you shall what you shall receive the very thing. You shall receive mercy. But the mercy that you're going to receive is mercy in perfection, mercy in dimension. And that is where this particular word, mercy, is unique. That's where this particular verse is unique from all the other verses in, in, the, in all the Beatitudes. So let me read, let, let me, before we go into, uh, you know, joining these two words together, let's just separate them a little bit. Let's go into Romans chapter 9, verse 15. 15. And it says, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. Of course, that's taken from Exodus, you know, chapter 33, uh, verse 19. God says, I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whomsoever I, the Lord, choose. In other words, God is saying, it's in my sovereignty that I would give mercy. Now, now <laughs> it's amazing because that is a little different from the grace of God. Mm. The grace of God, the grace of God is a little different because, because it doesn't even matter what we do. It, it, it is irrelevant what we do. God's grace comes upon us no matter what. But in this case, he says, I will have mercy on whomsoever. Let me just go on because verse 16 says now, so then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. You know, the Bible says, run and not be wary. Walk and not faint. You know, you ever see a little child come towards you? A, a child who comes towards you doesn't walk towards you. The child runs to you. And of course, an adult coming to you would walk to you. And so when the scripture is speaking here of, of running, of running to, it, it speaks of little ones, little ones coming, you know, to the Lord, young ones in Christ coming to the Lord. And let me read it again. He says, so then it is not of him who wills. It's not, it's not according to your will or of him who runs or, or the little child or the young one, the young one in Christ, those who just gave their life to Jesus. It's not even according to you, you little one, but of God himself who shows mercy. Mercy. For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, for this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. That's in Exodus chapter 9, verse 16. Uh, but here's the, here's, the, here's the key point of this very passage of scripture. He, verse 18 says, Therefore, he has a mercy on whom he wills, and whom he wills, he hardens. Precious people, God himself will have mercy on whom he wills and he will harden the heart on whom he wills. My God. You see, that's where the mercy of God is different. And what is the mercy of God that I'm, that I'm even speaking of? It is God's complete faithfulness. It is, his, it is unwavering benevolence, but even more so because the mercy of God is not just it's not just an emotion. It's not just God being emotional over us. I want us to understand it is about God removing one who's in distress. Listen to me. He, it's about removing our distress and it's about removing our stress. That is the mercy of God. You see, many of us find ourselves in dire situations. And, and I dare say, many of us place uh, ourselves in dire situations. No, you see, the circumstances that we find ourselves in, a lot of the time, it's not, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't just happen upon us many times. And if, if we were to be honest with ourselves, as we, we ourselves uh, put ourselves in our quagmire. We put ourselves in our situation. And then, and then we find ourselves sinking and we don't know what to do. And it is in that time, my God, it is in that time when the mercy of God is revealed. You see, let me, t let me, let me tell you something. You have to understand something. There are times when we... When we see a stop sign in front of us, in, in the natural, some of us, you see a stop sign and you look and you, uh, but, but you go ahead in driving. There are times that we see a stop sign or we see a no entry sign 
and we choose to go through that which we know we should not. We continue through a path that we know we should not go through. And we see, we see a no. We see no and we say yes. We see not now and we say yes now. And so what happens to us many times that we find ourselves in this situation and it is those who find themselves in a situation of distress that the mercy of God, do you understand what I'm saying? It, it is then that the mercy of God is released even upon our lives. The Bible says in Lamentations, let me read this quickly. In Lamentations chapter 3, uh, verse 22, verse 23, it says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And so the mercy of God speaks of the faithfulness of God. Now what is his faith? Here's, here's, the, here's the key point here. You see, when we speak of the mercy of God, we refer to God's faithfulness. When we refer to God's faithfulness, God's faithfulness is revealed when one is in distress. So the mercy of God speaks of a time when you are in stress and when you are distressed. This is why he says, so your, 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 my mercy is renewed every morning because guess what? We are people who have to take up our cross daily. Every day there is some stress. Every day there is a distress. We could come on, we could all admit to that. And so that's why he says his mercies are new every day for us. Because the mercy of God comes when we are in distress. But I, 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 I need to make something clear here. You see, we have to understand it is as we give mercy. He says, blessed are the merciful because it is the merciful who will receive the perfection of the mercy of God. You see, what happens to us is we are a people, we, 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 we are so uh, judgmental and self-righteous and you know, and we, we walk around thinking of ourselves more highly than we are. Yeah, yeah, we do that. Especially Christians, especially believers in Jesus Christ. And when we belong to a particular church, we belong to a particular denomination, it is, it's irrelevant. We believe that is it. And, 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 you know, and, you know, we are right and everybody else is wrong. And so we walk around strutting, you know, strutting ourselves and, and, and you know, walking in this egotistic way. And, and what happens is, you know, even in the season that we've just completed, the season of Passover, God says we are supposed to be looking and searching for leaven, the yeasts are, are, are in us, the, the, where we are so puffed up. And what happens to us many times, we find ourselves in a situation where we are not being merciful, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's at home. You know, we, we walk around judging someone and pointing fingers at someone, and the Lord says, the Lord says, he says, blessed are the merciful, the one who is willing to extend mercy towards someone when that person has done wrong. He says, you shall now receive mercy. It is the one who is able to give mercy is the one who will be able to receive mercy in perfect measure. You know, he says, you shall obtain mercy. You know what obtain means? It means having access. Guys, it's not automatic. It's not automatic. You will have access to the mercy of God as you are able to give his mercy. How many of us have received that? How many of us even know that that exists? Precious ones, stay tuned. I'm going to be right back. Get your copy of today's message. Email us, info at maptt.org. That's info at maptt.org. Or write to us, the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, P.O. Box 6057, Diego Martin, Trinidad, West Indies. You can listen to many of Minister Charmaine's messages or watch her on YouTube when you visit the website www.maptt.org. Messages such as Carriers of His Glory, a four-part series, Spiritual Gravity, The Power of Faith, and Resurrection Power. Be sure to watch the program Highway of Holiness on TV6 every 1st, 3rd and 5th Sunday at 7 a.m. Check your local listings and tune in to this station as MAP brings more words and messages about the power and glory of God on the Highway of Holiness. Welcome back, precious people. 
You know, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. They shall have access to God's mercy when we are merciful. But what does that have? How, how can we demonstrate that mercy? And I want to say to us that in order to demonstrate the mercy of God, we, for us to be able to do so, there is one thing we must have, which is a characteristic of God. It is his integrity. Integrity is the key to the mercy of God. And I know it appears as though, you know, it, it sounds a little strange to say, but, but I'm, I'm here to say to you that we're going to see today where if you were to be a, a man or a woman to walk in the integrity of God, to walk in God's integrity, to walk, you know, honest before the Lord, it will be so easy for you to express mercy to, towards others. You know we, know, we know the idiom, we've heard of the idiom, honesty is the best policy. Well, I want to, I want to tell you that, that, you know, that doesn't apply to the believer in Jesus Christ. It doesn't even apply to the Christian. Honesty being the best policy is not so. You know why I would say that? Because, because that would speak of a degree. And I want to say to you, honesty is not the best policy. Honesty is the only policy. <laughs> it is the only thing. It's not best. It's not a, it's a, it's not a, it cannot be compared. It cannot be compared. That's why we say God is good. We don't say God is better. God is best. No, we say God is good because he cannot be compared. And so I want, to, I want to say to you, you know, integrity is something that, that, that is not an option for us. The moment we start to use integrity as an option, or, you know, I, I, I will be honest here, or, you know, in this area, I will, I will choose not to be honest and be justified that the moment we start to go down that road, we begin to do something, our conscience starts to become sad. And I want to say to you, when your conscience becomes sad, your heart becomes corrupted. Now, you better hear what I'm saying. When your conscience begins to become sad, your heart begins to be corrupted. When your heart begins to become corrupted, we cannot we can no longer walk in the compassion of God. When we can no longer walk in the compassion of God, therefore we cannot possibly be merciful to others. Do you understand where I'm going here? We have to understand that it is critical to be able to receive the mercy of God. The, the critical key factor, according to the scriptures, is that we must express mercy to others. But the only way we can possibly express mercy towards someone is that we have got to be walking in integrity. Without integrity, our conscience, the, we just tell one lie to somebody. In order, when we tell one lie to someone, that lie has to be justified. So we lie upon that lie. And there is one lie compounding another lie. And then what happens is we begin to have a conscience that says, well, it's okay. Because when you repeat a sin, when you repeat a wrong, it doesn't matter anymore. Your conscience is now sad. And we come to a place where we, we, we don't have this, this softened heart. We don't have this heart of compassion anymore. We, 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 we continue to do what we choose to do and we continue to judge. It's easy to judge someone, my God. It's easy to judge someone when we are not walking in the, in the compassion of God. It's really easy to point a finger at somebody. And I want to say to you, George Washington, the first president of the United States, here's what he says. He says, I hope I shall possess firmness and virtue enough to maintain what I consider the most enviable of all titles, the character of an honest man. My God, my God, one of the founding fa fathers uh, of the United States of America. You know, you know why the United States of America, no matter all the things that are going on all around the world, they still hold true. They still, they still, they, they're carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ in, in spite of everything else. And the reason is it's because of their foundation. It's because of the foundation, because if the founding father could make such a statement, my God, precious people, we need to pray for leaders who would walk in integrity, who would, who would be filled with integrity. I want to go into, uh, uh, go into the scriptures in Psalm 26. Of course, you know, you know, in this particular Psalm, it gives us, it ties in now, 
It ties in now mercy and integrity. We need to understand, as I, as I just explained to you, we cannot receive mercy unless we give mercy. We cannot give mercy unless we are filled with the compassion of God. My God, and this is what God is saying. And so let me, just, let me start to read uh, verse 26, uh, chapter 26 of, this, of the Psalms. I want to read from, from verse, verse, verse 1. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, for I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. My God, such a powerful, powerful statement. Let me go on. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. You see, you see, you know, my God, the psalmist is pouring out. What is the psalmist doing? And David, you know, David was the psalmist here. What is David doing? David found himself at this point in this psalm in the midst of troubles. Remember I said to you, the mercy of God is expressed and revealed to us, to the one who who is in distress, to the one who is in stress. If you're not in stress, if you're not in distress, if, if you're not crying out, guess what? You're not going to see the mercy of God. You're not going to be, ex you're not, God is not going to reveal his mercy to you. He reveals his mercy to the one who's in stress, to the one who's in distress. So, you know, the, the James comes, you know, uh, the, our brother Jesus, he says, he says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or trials. He says, count it all joy. And you see, James understood that because that's when we can see the mercy of God revealed in our lives. And so, you know, you know, David is crying out. You see, in this point, David was facing slanderers. My God, he, people were falsely accusing him. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. Have you ever been falsely accused? Has anyone slandered your name? Has anyone spoken lies against you? This is what David was, was, was facing. Have you ever been in such a, a situation? And David cried out and he says, vindicate me, Lord. Vindicate me because I am what? Here's what he says. Why? Here's why he says he's, he can pray such a prayer because he says, because I have walked in your integrity. <laughs> That's the reason. You see, if we're crying out, to, hear me now, if we're crying out to God for the vindication of God in our lives, when people are accusing us, when people are pointing fingers at us, we, have better, be, we better be a people who can say to God and say to man, I am walking in my integrity. And so no matter what you throw at me, no matter what stones you throw at me, I know my God will vindicate me. I know the mercy of God will be afforded to me because I am going to speak to you with compassion, my God. The Bible Bible says love your enemies I'm gonna to speak to you in compassion I'm not I'm not the Bible says when you when they revile them he reviled them not and so I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw stones back at you I'm gonna go before my God and the mercy of God the mercy of God will vindicate me do you understand some of us you know as people come up against you and you wanna you wanna you wanna defend yourself you wanna stand but you have a righteous judge if you have given your life to Jesus Christ if you've put down religion and taken up relationship with Jesus. I've told you there is such a difference. There's so many of you are bound by religion. Religion is man's way of trying to reach a thrice holy God. It's impossible. My God, hear me now. It's impossible possible you you need the grace of God to come upon you the grace of God precious ones that, that word is haris the grace of God coming upon you is the joy of that comes out of the word uh, hara which means joy it is his joy coming within you who is the joy of the Lord who is the joy of the Lord it is Jesus Christ the one who went on that cross and died on your behalf precious ones it is not religion it is a relationship with Jesus Christ and that that will bring you into a place where you could cry out like David. David says, I have walked in your integrity so you can vindicate me, my God, that I will not slip. I, I have not slipped. That's what David says. Can I, can I go on? Verse, verse 4 says, I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, nor will I go with the hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. You see, you see, this is a problem because 
David was accused of actually worshiping false gods. That's what, that's, you know, that was the accusation, but, but David never did. He never did. He worshiped the one true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. Uh, uh, let, me, let me say to us, you know, 2 Corinthians, this is so important. I'm speaking to somebody by the Spirit of the Lord as a prophet. The, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me now, and I know that some of you need to hear this. Today you need to hear this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says something. It says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has a light with darkness? My God, do you know the one who is lawless? It is Satan himself. Look at me. We find ourselves among compromisers. The moment you find yourself in a situation, you know, the Bible says flee the very appearance of evil. The moment we find ourselves in a compromising situation, in a compromising position, you better hear, you better run. You better run. You better, as a child, as a child would run, you better run. Because I'm here to say to you, we are called to not be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. And an unbeliever is anybody. An unbeliever is anyone who will not accept or acknowledge and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm not talking about somebody who's born into a particular religion. I am talking about someone who has made a decision, has made a decision to surrender their life, to surrender their will, to surrender their way, to surrender their word for the will, way, and purpose of God. If you, my God, are, are, are yoking yourself, and I'm talking about whether it's business, I'm talking about, I'm talking about whether it's relationship. You better be careful. If, if that person is not thinking like you, you are unequally yoked. And what, what happens is, you know, you know, we find ourselves in that quagmire and we, and we are sinking. We find ourselves sinking because we start to think as they think rather than how, as the Lord would reveal to us. And so God is telling us, God is telling us right now, he's really showing us. He's showing us how we are to walk in this integrity. Let me just go all the way down to verse 11. Verse 11 says, but as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me. We bring it home now. Redeem me and be merciful for me, to me because I, I have walked in my integrity. Precious people, we are called to walk in the integrity of God, we are called, the bottom line, which is the end of the, of the chapter, we are called to walk in the integrity of God. And when we do that, our conscience will no longer be said. We will walk in the compassion of God. When we walk in the compassion of God, we will be able to extend and afford mercy to others. When we afford mercy to others, God himself will give to us mercy, according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Precious ones, I want to close by saying to you, I love you with the love of Jesus. Much more importantly, Jesus loves you. God bless. Get your copy of today's message. Email us, info at maptt.org. That's info at maptt.org. Or write to us, the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, P.O. Box 6057, Diego Martin, Trinidad, West Indies. You can listen to many of Minister Charmaine's messages or watch her on YouTube when you visit the website www maptt.org Messages such as Carriers of His Glory, a four-part series, Spiritual Gravity, The Power of Faith, and Resurrection Power. Be sure to watch the program Highway of Holiness on TV6 every first, third, and fifth Sunday at 7 a.m. Check your local listings and tune in to this station as MAP brings more words and messages about the power and glory of God on the Highway of Holiness. Ministry for Anointed Prophecy is now located at our new address, the corner of Manning Street and Digo Martin Main Road, Digo Martin. All are welcome.